Hi everybody, welcome to our IoT demo. Um, I'm going to hand this over to the team, Tyler, Ricardo and Alan. So I'm Alan Bennett, VP of Engineering here at Open Source Foundries. So what we've got here is we had a unique opportunity to work early on with the SoftBank IoT uh, platform group. And so what they've done is they've built an IoT platform for, uh, for the IoT devices to communicate their data into. Uh, so we've got four Lenaro's 96 boards nitrogens running Zephyr um, and a custom application that we've got to send data from this board up into the SoftBank IoT cloud. So uh, it, this is uh, going through Japan right now? That's right. So the data routes through an IoT gateway, which we've got here on a BeagleBone Black Wireless, and it sends the data to Japan into the SoftBank IoT platform, uh, where we then uh, have a dashboard that actually retrieves the data from the IoT platform back to this laptop. And, and this, is, uh, this is important because uh, you want to have a future where IoT is, is not managed through those little Android apps and stuff. That's right. So, you know, the, the goal of IoT and the devices is to be able to send the data all the way up into the cloud so that you can perform advanced analytics and different prognostics applications on that data. Um, so using platforms like SoftBank's IoT platform, we've actually got the data stores and the cloud infrastructure to be able to store a very large amount of data. All right, cool. And uh, do you want to show it? Yeah, so basically, what we actually want to show that the data is live. So using this hair dryer, we can actually heat up the processor, which will then change the temperature of the devices and send that up to the cloud. So. Uh, so we're sending data about every two seconds, and then the laptop's querying the data about every 10 seconds. And uh, these sensors could go do, they could do heat, but they could do all kinds of other stuff? That's right. So the, you know, the sensor data we're sending now is just the temperature of the MCU which is the processor or the chip. But you could, you could definitely imagine it's sending, you know, different data. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you got the I.O. expansion port here on the nitrogen, so you can interface it with all sorts of sensors and you get accelerometer data, um, you know, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, those kind of sensors. What is that board, the nitrogen? Nitrogen's a, a Nordic NR52. Um, it's one of our 96 board IoT form factor boards. It's an ARM Cortex M4? Uh, it's a Cortex M4. M4, M4, yes. All right. And uh, is there some kind of Linux that runs on these kinds of Cortex M? No. Um, well, we're hoping that Zephyr will become the uh, Linux of IoT platforms. And so this runs uh, our Zephyr micro platform, which is a secure, updatable, uh, over the air uh, micro platform to allow developers to accelerate um, their IoT development. Uh, Linara is doing lots of work in the Zephyr. Absolutely, yep. And we're doing really good stuff there. We're collaborating with everybody upstream and uh, trying to you know, get Zephyr to a point where people can start making products off of it and be very successful. There's lots of uh, platforms kind of for uh, what's called uh, uh, MCU platforms and stuff like that, but w why is Zephyr special? Uh, open source, right? Everything's gonna be open source with Zephyr. Uh, there's a large community around it and we're getting a lot of buy-in from different industry partners, Intel and ARM working together collaboratively to build uh, you know, an open source RTOS. All right, and you have a couple more demos, right? Absolutely. Here, right? I'll move this over to Ricardo here. Hi, right. so who are you? Uh, my name is Ricardo Silvetti, uh, principal engineer on Open Switch Foundries. Um, and I'm already going to, the second demo that we're going to show you here is like a really cool technology of like a standard that was just released like two months ago, and uh, which is called a Bluetooth Mesh. So what I'm going to show is just like controlling all of those lights in the back. as being, you know, each of those lights being participating on the same Bluetooth Mesh network. And here, uh, I'm using this tablet to control uh, the devices, and uh, since the tablet doesn't, uh, the, the software stack doesn't add, uh, talk natively Bluetooth mesh, I'm using one of the devices as a, uh, a proxy. So let me just show, for example, here I'm connected with this device, and this, if I turn it on. So this is one? Yeah, you're gonna see that it's communicating over Bluetooth. And the interesting thing is we, we designed a pattern just for this demo. It's just to show, uh, to, to have the light behaving differently depending how far it is from the first node. 
So because like the, the way the Bluetooth mesh works is that uh, you could have like some of the nodes as relays that would simply just relay the messages so we can have like a, a, a you can reach the devices uh, way you know like long longer than in, you know like closer to the, the to the tablet. So let's play with a few other devices and I'll show you how it all works. So here you see they're blinking on the same pattern. So this is kind of demonstrating uh, the one hop that goes like from the proxy device to the other lamps. So and uh, there's also and to demonstrate, let me turn it on, all on. So now you'll see here like they're all kind of blinking the same pattern because of the distance, right? The, the radio is really good. So we like in order to have the blinking like really slowly and to show that they're actually going over several hops would need like a, a bigger space. But we could try to stress it out to see how it goes, but I think they're all gonna be blinking this way. So all the lights are battery powered, so you can see in here, this is the actual modified lamp that we have. So this is just, normally this is just a little cheap lamp, but you, you, you added a little Bluetooth trigger system? Exactly, we wanna see, as, as Tyler was saying, like as we have here with the nitrogen, uh, we could use Zephyr and just add one of those boards and just buy like a, a, no, a, a cheap kind of uh, lamp as you can buy like for example on Amazon anywhere and just make it smart using the latest technologies uh, like for example Bluetooth mesh. And uh, here you see, if you see in details, this is the smart chip that is providing the Bluetooth connectivity. And it's just powered up like batteries. No, you buy batteries. It's just mm. on. And suddenly, you transformed like a cheap device in a real uh, uh, interesting product using uh, Bluetooth mesh. This little PCB that has this Bluetooth stuff, how much does that cost, do you think? Here's, uh, this is the one that we're using. We're using one for Red Bear called the yeah. Nano 2. How much was the price of it? It was $18. $18. $18. Yeah. But that's kind of like a development kit kind of uh, yeah. device right here. Uh, but in theory, something like this mass produced is yeah, it's, small, it's, small amount. It's, it's a lot cheaper, for sure. And uh, do, you, do you have one more demo? Yeah, yep. I'll pass it over to Tyler again. Let me turn this off. So Tyler can let me just log in here real quick. All right. <clears throat> so I'm Tyler Baker, Principal Software Engineer from uh, Open Source Foundries, and I want to talk to you about uh, our OS Light project. So it stands for Open Source Light. Um, we started designing this product because we couldn't find a good community project uh, to build a smart light. So these are smart lamps. They run on battery power, as uh, Ricardo said. Now, the difference between these two lamps and the lamps you see behind is that these are running uh, BLE mesh. And these are actually um, using our Zephyr Micro platform, just like these are, but they're actually using a different protocol to communicate with the device management system. Um, in this case, we're using lightweight machine to machine and we're talking through a gateway over BLE, so six low pan over BLE, back to a uh, device management system running on my laptop. And then what I've got now is I've actually um, have some code that's using the API of the device management system for LaShawn to automate what we're seeing here. So you can see that these lamps here are turning on full brightness, they're dimming four steps down and they're turning themselves off. That's all being done through the API. So what that simulates is you've got an end device with a gateway talking to a cloud service and a third party application talking to the cloud service to control the, the lights here. Um, the best part about this, all the source code's open source and anybody could buy you know, an NRF52 uh, BLE Nano and wire it up into one of these smart lamps. But I wanted to take it a step further. So personally, I like to, to use 3D printers to create things and so I've, I've created a 3D printed smart light uh, that's slightly different than, than what we have here. So you can kind of see that there's two variants of um, of light. So these are just a standard LED array. And what we have here is an Adafruit NeoPixel. It's a 12 LED WRGB NeoPixel uh, using the, um, the BLE Nano inside. And this is the mechanical. So we just have a base body here. And what happens is we take, we, you would take the chip here and you'd insert it inside and you'd put your wiring in. And then you would set the light here like this and put the diffuser on. And essentially that would be your smart light at this point. So you can get a good look at what that might look like here, all assembled. And that's what we have running here. It's actually running off of um, line voltage. So there's an AC to DC converter in there to five volts, and then everything else above the AC to DC converter is uh, five volts. So I'm gonna make the designs 
if you want to print this light bulb, uh, the housing and the NeoPixel mount and the diffuser so people can reproduce this. I think it's a good project because when I scoured the internet, there's no you know, blueprints to make a smart light. And now we kind of have you know, a lamp, an LED lamp uh, design here, or we have like a form factor light bulb uh, that we can use so people can, can hack around. And this is a secure end-to-end -end demonstration that's updatable. So this is, this is kind of like the industry best practices that we want to show everybody that if you're building a smart product like this, you need to think about things. So we've got secure boot, we use MCU boot to chain load into Zephyr. And then from Zephyr uh, allows us to do download updates and, and update these devices while they're in the field over Bluetooth. So this is all part of the open source foundries, but uh, also the Linaro light group. Yeah. And you're sharing some lights in the light group, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. right? So we, we collaborate a lot with those guys and um, you know, definitely helping them uh, upstream and they're helping us with things. So it's been a really good collaboration between the two groups. And uh, you know, what we do in, in, in our group is really try to take the technology and apply it to a product and a use case and, and really show the end-to-end -end system. Uh, a lot of times it's easy to kind of take a piece and say, this is the demo, but you know, this is cloud technology, this is gateway technology, this is IoT technology, and it's all working together. And that's what we do. And uh, the, another interesting piece here is like, they're all running Zephyr, right? All of those devices with the latest version. And we have like different hardware, like here, for example, in the nitrogen uh, being used, like then we have like DLE nano controlling, you know, like those lights using DLE mesh and, you know, like these lights using actually IP using LWM to M. So we're showing like the same platform, the same micro platform without any hack and without any fork, it's just basically upstream, uh, uh, you know, like just, just recently released the one nine version and you can already like do several uh, uh, use cases with it, purely open source technology. So there's a lot of, uh smart light platforms and everything, but usually they each of them have a different app. And there, there are some platforms too, but the, the, so Linaro and Open Source Foundries is trying to help making some more, even more open. Right, we try to accelerate IoT the IoT system. development, but at the same time when we're accelerating it, we want to make sure everybody's using best practices with security because it's obviously a huge concern in the industry. So that's why we wanted to make this, and like Ricardo said, we have these different permutations, but it's all running the same base platform. And that's really what Open Source Foundries is here to provide, is that base platform that everybody can use in their product will keep it up to date for you, and you worry about your application logic. We'll take care of the security and the end-to-end -end story. Uh, so we, hopefully some smaller startup can grab our technology and get to market quicker, and that's what we want. Smaller startups, but also any company, companies, they would be contacting you to try to get kind of like products shipped and stuff like that? Exactly, and you know, that's kind of why we wanted to work with somebody like SoftBank, who's already got an established device management cloud <laughs> to show that if, even if you have existing device management software, we can integrate with it uh, using our Zephyr micro platform. So the other part about these, these platforms is, you know, we help companies get to market faster with the latest technologies, but we also help them keep their products safe throughout the lifespan by providing the updates and, you know, security fixes throughout the entire product. So the, 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 one of the ideas here is that this is going to be updated forever somehow because it's open source? Yep, absolutely. And we, and we provide you the updates and we do the due diligence, understanding what's changing upstream, figuring out which security vulnerabilities needs fixing, and then providing you know, our customers with that list and that, that confidence that here's what well, we've done the due diligence upstream. Now you get the benefit for free. Focus on your value add because the platform is the commodity that we're providing you. It's one of the big challenges right now at Denaro and also with ARM in general is getting security with IoT, right? right. Yeah. And everybody's doing something different. So we want to provide a common platform, that base layer everybody can build their products off of and have that sense of security and know that they can update the product and know that they're going to get the latest fixes uh, in a timely manner. Yeah. At Open Source Foundries, I mean, all of us came from Lenaro and deep in our DNA, I guess, is upstream technology and being close to tips. So. The software we're building is not going to be a long-term stable type of software, but we're going to make TIP software as stable as can be so that it can actually be used in product development. And here are some of the boards you're talking about also. So what you talk about these boards? Yeah, uh, the other piece, like as, as Salah was saying, like the, uh, that we have like this, uh, the Zephyr uh, micro platform to basically control the Zephyr uh, based devices and microcontrollers. We also have uh, the Linux micro platform, which is open embedded based. Uh, and we have like a container runtime on top of it. So we can uh, change the behavior of that device and uh, depending on the containers that are gonna use to make it behave like differently and, and basically supply, uh, uh, for example, here, as we're sh showing like the gateway for the SoftBank demo. 
which is uh, which is which was in the screen. Octavo Systems uh, SIP based uh, bigger bone blue. The, this is the bigger bone wireless, the black wireless. What is? And uh, this, uh, the interesting thing is that we have like a common build, um, open embedded laser with the same kernel that could be running on all of this, all of these devices. And here, what we did is simply we have like a, a set of containers that just basically makes the the, the, the open embedded build behave as we want for this specific case, running the uh, being the gateway for this specific service. But we also have like as we had with the other lamps in here, we could have the same gateway, the same hardware behave completely different depending on the containers that are running. For example, to supply uh, MQTT uh, based data uh, to the cloud, we could also host, for example, services on, on the device. So the, the, the entire idea is to also have like a, a, a compatible system, uh, open embedded based run on Linux that, uh, with, that you can extend easily with containers. So we can also, depending on the application, you, you have the micro platform for the microcontrollers if you're taking care of that piece, but you can also have like a, a smart gateways that can be extended independently of, independent of the device that you're using. So can you show some of those? Uh... Yep. So here I have like what is running in here. This is the BeagleBone Black Wireless. Uh, we could also be running on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Uh, let me show it here. And there. So this one there? This is the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Uh, that we, another target that we also have, uh, which is the 964 high key, widely known, and Lenaro. And uh, the other, for example, uh, build, uh, the other target that we have, this is the Dragon Board A20, which there's also interesting uh, uh, pieces in here because you have like Ethernet adapter, so this is like a, a good fit for a gateway. All right. Since you could be running. Uh, over the wire, and uh, you could be providing Bluetooth connectivity, wireless connectivity, anything that you want. And you could uh, uh, be running the software that you would desire there inside a container. So 